Party on Garth, party on Wayne. Welcome to week 10 of this NHL season. The Hawks played four games this week, and if I had one word to describe it, uh, it would be excellent. The Hawks would start the week off with three games on the road, Rangers, Islanders, and Blues, before coming back home to finish the week off against the defending Western Conference champion, San Jose Sharks. If you remember last week, uh, the Rangers and the Hawks played a fantastic game where both Darling and Ranta uh, both had regulation shutouts before the Rangers finally got a goal in the overtime period uh, to win that one. This is another rematch and just another stellar game from both goaltenders and both teams. I uh, definitely could see these teams being... Um, I, want, I don't want to jinx it, but... <laughs> Yeah, this would be, it would be an exciting Stanley Cup matchup, I'll tell you that. This one, however, would not go scoreless in regulation time. Big thanks to Trevor Van's best Reamsdyke with his second period goal. Nice little feed from Panarin. And TBR gets his first goal of the season. The Hawks take a 1-0 lead and break Ranta's 170-some minute shutout streak. k k, -k combo breaker Good to see TBR back uh, on the goal score sheet. Uh, he's getting his legs back under him, getting back to the level of play that he had last year uh, where he showed that while not you know, a top line pairing defenseman, uh, very solid third line defenseman and, and even maybe a little bit more than that. Um, so definitely good to see out of that. The Rangers obviously would not go gently into the night as Jesper Fast midway through the second period finds a way to bat the puck past Darling and tie the game up. It is 1-1 in the second. No worries though, as Anisimov, Campbell, and Panarin with a little over a minute left get into the zone and just work some nifty puck movement uh, with Anisimov finishing it off, putting the Hawks up 2-1, to one, going into the third period, and they would take that all the way to the finish line. The Hawks win 2-1 against the Rangers. Big win, nice win uh, after losing to the Rangers last week. Uh, just, like I said, another great duel from Ranta and Darling. There was only one power play uh, in this game. Uh, the Hawks had it, but they couldn't get anything with it. Um, just, just not a lot of penalties, just some good hard hockey. And like I said, this would be quite the matchup if they got to play each other in the playoffs. One thing to note is that this was Taze and Seabrook's first games back since sustaining uh, each of their respective Injuries, uh, definitely good to see those buttes back on the ice. So after the big win against the Rangers, the Hawks get to stay in the New York area uh, as they would play the New York Islanders next, which means only one thing. No sleep till... I'm not even going to try to rap. Um, yeah, Hawks are in Brooklyn playing the Islanders, and if you... Got up to get a drink or some food in this one. Uh, there was a good chance you missed something. Two-time former Blackhawk Andrew Ladd would open up the scoring early in the first period, followed closely by Casey Sezikis. Islanders are up 2-0, and uh, this just looks like it's not going to be the Hawks' day. Don't worry, here come the Hawks. Artemi Panarin gets a power play goal, followed by Anisimov's power play goal, and then Hossa scores to give the Hawks a 3-2 lead before Ryan Strom would answer it and tie the game up. It is 3-3 and that was the first period. Anders Lee would score to put the Islanders in front 22 seconds into the second period. Uh, the Islanders would keep that lead for the majority of the period until very, very late when the Hawks would get a power play and Breadman would get his second power play goal of the game. Big goal for the Hawks right at the end of the second period. Big momentum shift. They would take that momentum into the third period. A little over halfway through the third period, Kruger would do some great forechecking work, tying up a man behind the net. Rasmussen grabbed the puck, throw it in front. Richard Panic would bury it. The Hawks take the lead. They would hang on to win this one. They beat the Islanders, surviving the, the crazy first period in this one. Uh, get their third win in a row. Excellent. Hawks were 3-for-3 three three on the power play in this one, 2-for-2 two two on the penalty kill as well, 100% in the special teams areas. Uh, that is fantastic, and that is one of the ways uh, you can win when your backup goalie gives up four goals. Uh, just a very nice win, even if it's against the Islanders, who are very near the bottom of the league standings. 
Um, just just one of those games where you just find a will to win. The Hawks go 2-0 and in the New York area. That's pretty nice. And after their success in New York, the Hawks would fly to St. Louis to take on the Blues. This would be the last matchup between these teams before the Winter Classic a few weeks from now. Uh, big divisional matchup on a Saturday night. Could make or break a weekend. Hawks started a bit slow in this one. Meanwhile, the Blues came hard out of the gate. Berglund would take a slap shot that Darling would get most of, but it would find a way to trickle into the net. Blues are up 1-0 less than a minute into the game. It would get better from there on, though. Hawks would slowly get their legs churning, get their legs under, and start controlling more play. Uh, Rasmussen would find a way to chip in a puck late in the first period, ties it up. We're into the first intermission, 1-1. But this would be a back-and-forth game all game long. Early in the second period, Kyle Brosiak would shoot the puck and it would deflect off a broken stick lying on the ice and get past Darling. I have never seen a goal like that of all the years I've watched hockey. Uh, that was nuts. Blues take the lead, 2-1 before TVR dishes a beautiful stretch pass to Kane who would beat Allen and tie the game up. This is one of those games where it just seemed like as the Hawks fought and clawed for the tying goal, uh, it wouldn't really matter because the Blues would just score and take back the lead shortly afterwards. Um, and that's what pretty much happened. Berglund would get his second goal of the game uh, before Campbell would tie it up and then Petrangelo would score a slap shot from the point. I don't think Darling ever saw it. And the Blues have a 4-3 to three lead going into the third period. Thankfully, the third period was nothing like the rest of the game in that department. Jalmerson would tie the game up a minute into the third period. The rest of the period would pretty much be both teams just going at it, hard-nosed hockey, just trying to find a way to take the lead, uh, but both goaltenders standing tall. And that is until a little less than five minutes left to go in the game when, out of all people, Vinny Henestroza does some great, great work for checking behind the net, gets to the front of the net, there's a shot, he gets the rebound, kicks it to his stick, backhands it past Allen. Oh, just a beautiful goal. The emotion on his face while he celebrated. Oh, Chicago-born boy getting a Chicago-style goal. Artemi Panarin would put the game away with an empty net goal a little bit later. And even though Darling gives up four goals for the second straight night, he looked a little fatigued in this one. The Hawks find a way to survive for the second straight night. Beat St. Louis on a Saturday night. Huge win against the divisional foe. Not really much ways to describe this feeling, this victory, except for uh, excellent. You know how earlier I talked about the Rangers and the Hawks being a potentially a fantastic playoff matchup? The Blues and Hawks, much more likely scenario, again, uh, these two teams. I mean, I know we're not even halfway through the season, but with how these two teams are playing and where they are in the, in the standings, it's very hard to imagine uh, either of them missing out on the springtime action this year and man it's it's gonna be nuts if these two teams play each other again uh remembering last year's matchup and the, and the many years prior um all i'm saying is that it's not too early to just start preparing yourself for that stress to finish off this week the hawks would play the following night against the defending western conference champion San Jose Sharks, who come into this game rested, unlike the Hawks, who had played the Blues the night before. Very easy uh, to see the Hawks kind of giving a little bit of a letdown, especially Darling playing so much uh, and looking a little bit fatigued in that St. Louis game. Not really a whole lot of high hopes here, uh, but that's why they play the game. Not surprisingly, the Sharks controlled a lot of play in this one. Uh, there are many situations where the Hawks were just trying to survive, especially 
the times where they didn't even help themselves, like uh, when when Campbell didn't even have a stick and, and nobody, none of the forwards decided to help him out in that regard. Um, fortunately, though, for the Hawks, the Sharks were basically all Swedish, no finish in this one. Joe Pavelski would have a nice tip-in goal for the Sharks to give them a one-goal lead early in the second period. However, Duncan Keith would get his first goal of the season with a shot from the point. The game is 1-1 going into the third. Pretty much all you can ask for, really. Then the third period happens, and the Hawks take control for some reason. Hartman would get the puck off the faceoff and snipe it top shelf. Hmm. Pretty goal there. Then later on, Hinnestroza and Hossa are on a two-on-one, and Vinny does a fantastic thing and decides to shoot the puck instead of forcing a pass over to Hossa. He beats the keeper. The Hawks have a 3-1 lead late in the third period before Panarin, unselfishly, gives Kane a chance at the empty net goal. Kane buries a pass, the wacky inflatable arm flailing two-man and Brett Burns. The Hawks win their fifth in a row beat the defending Western Conference champs. They go perfect this week, four for four. They've grabbed 13 out of the last 14 possible points. Guys like Vinny Hanestroza, Dennis Rasmussen, Ryan Hartman, bunch of guys are stepping up on this team and helping this team find a way to win even though you think they probably shouldn't with all the other excuses they might have. Crawford out. Tay Seabrook out. They're just finding a way to win, and it's a beautiful sight to see. It just gives a lot of hope right now for the future of not only this, this season, but also this, this team with all those young guys. Uh, just fantastic. Thanks for watching this episode of Hawks Recap. I hope you enjoyed it. I also hope you enjoyed my shoddy guitar playing. Uh, go ahead and critique it down in the comments below. And just to finish off, I do want to say that... It is Kane's world, and we're all just living in it.